Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Let's Code. Today is going to be a little bit different in all the code is already finished being typed. Everything is done. I'm just going to be going through the code, explaining what we're doing today and how I got what I got. So, yeah, let's get started. So here I need to actually just change a little bit. There we go. So we're going to be going through this code here. Today we're going to be doing a Caesar cipher and excuse me if I'm uh, if I'm getting that wrong, like the pronunciation. I apologize. So what is a Caesar cipher? Again, apologize if I'm wrong. Um, you know, I'm probably going to say it wrong throughout the whole video. So the Caesar cipher is a way to disguise messages and it was used a long time ago. I'm not sure exactly why or, or how or for what I should say, sorry. But I'll explain what it is and then I will show you how we got to it. This is so far the longest program that we've written and it took a little while. I'll admit I'm, I'm not that great of a programmer so this took a long time for me. That's not to say I wasn't working on it the whole time that I didn't make a video for Let's Code but it did take me a long time, and tonight I sat down and said, I wanted to finish it. <laughs> so yeah. So say you wanted to send the message hi to someone. The index in the alphabet um, would be technically 8 and 9, but because this is coding, um, the first, first index starts at 0, so hi would be 7 and 8. Now, say that there's an offset, right? So... The code is basically, you take a letter, right, and you offset what letter, um, you offset the letter that you actually want by a certain amount that is agreed upon whoever will be reading the letter, the, uh, the note. So for instance, say we wanted to just send the letter H, and the offset was 3. Well, it would be one, two, three. So it would show up as an E, but we really mean H. So if it's HI and it's by three, one, two, three, it would show up as EF. Now, I also had to include capital letters and special characters. I apologize for the mic moving there, which wasn't required in the challenge but I figured I would do it anyway. I thought it was interesting and I had fun doing it. So let's go through the code. It starts out with the constructor, constructor being called where we put in the input message we want, which is what you saw at the start of the video. We put in the offset of characters that we want to have, which is five in this instance, and then this is just an extra thing I did for the intro where it's a timeout where basically it will use the cipher and then wait three seconds and then show back the actual message that you put in first. Which basically it just stops the program for however many seconds you want, in this case three, and then continues. So the program starts with the input. We put in a message and then we save a new string output by using the cipher and we also use the offset that we put in at the start of the program. It then prints out the output, prints a new line, waits two seconds or however many seconds you want. Uh, I need to change that. <laughs> and then it will reverse the cipher showing what the original text was and print that out. So, how does it work? It all uses this one method called useCypher, which uses all these other methods, these three other methods, but we'll get to that in a moment. So the very first thing we're gonna have to do in the useCypher method is we need to take the input and convert it to an array of characters. So basically we take this, this whole string where it's like, for instance, hello, and we can make it into this, where it's separated into a list. So 
So it's it's different like that, and then we can reference 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? It's a five-letter word, but the way that indexing works, it's um, the last letter is 4. The reason that we do this is because I have... A, I have separate methods set up where the way I did it was I had it use one character at a time and I wanted to be able to do an entire message no matter how long it was or, or anything like that and so the reason for that I had just set it up to be into an array and then we can handle one character at a time and just stitch it back together at the end. So you'll see here I have a string output which is going to be the output at the end of the method and then we have a for loop. Basically, this runs through the entire length of the input that you put in. So if you put in a word that's five letters, it'll run through it five times. Simple. So then here, what I did was I have an if statement that basically remembers whether or not the character that you're currently changing is uppercase or lowercase. So if you can see, like, it keeps the uppercase here. Or over here, sorry. <laughs> Wrong monitor. So welcome, the very first letter W is capitalized. So the B is capitalized here. And it keeps all the other stuff and, and punctuation and things like that. But that's done separately. But the capitalization is here. That's little if statement handles it all. So that's all for the uh, use cipher. But basically what it does is it takes output, which is the string that we create up here, and then adds adds to the output character dot to uppercase if the character wasn't uppercase in the first place and then it does calculate offset and then that method takes an index and an offset so the index is going to be uh, for the ABC array which is basically the entirety of the alphabet and it's it will take your your input and then offset it so for there, we get the index of the current letter that we're looking at. So like I said earlier with the, the hello example, uh, where 0 would be h, we will get the index of h. So if you look up here, h would be 7. So we, we basically put in 7, and then the offset that we put in up here at the start of this. So it would take 7 minus 5, which would be 2, and then would give you C. So we do that the entire amount of the amount of times that we need to do it in order to complete the entire message. So let's just take a quick look at the get index method, which is very, very, very simple. <laughs> we the only little strange things that or different things we do is we make sure that everything is lowercase here. That way, up here, I don't have to do lowercase a, capital A, lowercase b, capital B. We can just have all one set and then compare only using lowercases. And then all the uppercase things is handled up here, which is a lot easier. So we also have it checking if, if it's a special character. Uh, all of these are special characters, so spacebar, um, exclamation point question mark period comma hashtag or pound whichever you would prefer uh, exclamation point and so on and so forth those are all special characters I had it handle that separately and you'll notice here if I if I just change this quickly and I do hello and then say we put brackets it will throw an error here it doesn't recognize what a bracket is but it's very very simple to actually add brackets and and well not brackets specifically it's very simple to add special characters into the array here so now bam it's all good we have the the new special characters added which is very simple to do and it, it will go up infinitely um, up to 900 special characters or so somewhere around there I forget what the exact number was so we'll, it'll go up a lot <laughs> And then down here we have the the main part of the method which basically checks if the letter that you put in or basically checks what the index of the letter you put in is so 
it will run through the entire alphabet and it'll basically say if the current letter we're looking at is equal to the letter that you're asking for uh, return the current index that we're on of the alphabet right so if you put in a here index it's the first time it runs through is going to be at zero and it's going to check if ABC the alphabet um, the index at zero which is a is equal to a the input then return zero and then if nothing if no letters are found um, it will return 999 it only return this if it doesn't recognize a special character like if you put in a uh, new character like the brackets I put in earlier before they were programmed in as special characters it will return 999 which will throw an error as you've seen earlier so that is the get index method now we have the calculate offset method which is the the most um, I shouldn't say expensive but the most uh, complicated method but before we do that I think I'm gonna go through the special character code first because it's more simple and it's not really the main part of the video where calculate offset is and it probably better to do that last so basically to check if a special character is a special character we do the almost the same thing that we do for get index we go to check special character and then we have a character and do check me so it'll run through all of the special characters and I'll say if the special character that we're currently looking at is equal to what you want to know if it's a special character then return I and it will will return the the current index of the special characters and if it does not find anything if it doesn't find that your input is a special character at all it returns 999 and then up here at get index it says if is special character the letter the input that we're getting for get index is not equal to 999 so if it is a special character then it will uh, return is special character letter which will return the the index of special characters here uh, so if it's a space then it'll return zero and it adds 50 the reason that it does this is because otherwise it would return um, like for instance zero but because we're using the get index method when it returns zero it thinks that we're talking about a so we add 50 to it the reason for this is because we we have something special in the calculate offset method which can deal with this and make sure that it knows that it's working with special characters so now the final method the calculate offset method it checks if it's a special character very first thing because we don't want to go through everything else and then realize oh it's a special character so if the index which is uh, one of our inputs is greater than 50 or greater than or equal to 50 because again if it's a spacebar then that's uh, zero so it would be right on 50 if it's greater than or equal to 50 and it is less than 900 because if you remember I, I return 999 so if it's between 50 and 900 then it's gonna go through this method here so that's basically making sure it's a special character then it will return the special character because this one is going to return a character it's going to return the character and it's going to return the character at the index minus 50 so this is how we deal with the plus 50 that we had earlier next we have it if if your index plus your offset is if for instance if you do a and then your offset is like 2 then it would go a one two so it would be y this is basically the code that deals with that kind of situation and I have an example here because I use this to, to figure it out myself so it will say it'll make a new int which will be the new index so the way the math works out here is basically you do 26 th the uh, amount of letters in the alphabet minus your your uh, index plus offset which in this case if you had B and your offset was negative 3 then you would get negative 2 so 26 plus negative 2 
which is 26 minus 2, is equal to 24, and 24 is the index for y. So what we do here is we basically do this math here, but we do it just in one line here. So 26 plus, and then we calculate this. So this is just one line. And then we return uh, ABC new index. So we return the index of the alphabet that we are currently doing. The next one is basically the opposite, where it goes if you were at Z and the index was, uh, or your offset was plus 2, right? Then it would be Z and then 1, 2, so you get B. And the index area, the example I use here, would be Z plus uh, the offset being 3, would be 28. And then you take that number and you minus the amount of letters in the alphabet, which is 26 again, and then you get 2. So again, we just do that in one line, and then we return ABC with the new index. This one is super easy. It's basically if your index plus offset is between 0 and, uh, and 25. The reason for this is just because um, that's the same as, like, you know, A through Z. It's just because, again, we start at 0 because the way that arrays work in Java, it goes 0 is, is the first and 1 is the second and so on. So basically we just return ABC and then we do index plus offset because we don't have to loop at all between. And then here, uh, it's the exact same as this. I suppose I probably, I could have done this in one where I could have just done, you know, less than or equal to 25, but I did it on a separate line, why not? Uh, basically this is if it lands on A specifically. <laughs> So we we return A. And then if none of this finds anything, like if it can't figure out anything, it returns a capital X. Uh, though I've never I've never actually seen it return a capital X. Like I don't know when it would do this. But you do need to have this line here because uh, for instance if you if you comment it out, this method won't work just because all the other returns are in if statements. So you need to have a default return statement, or else it would get like stuck in the method. So you put that all together and we have one nifty little method here where you call the the main the main window here, the main class, sorry, and because this is our constructor, this is just the main code, but this is a constructor, then we can just put in whatever input we want, whatever offset we want. So for here we do we go forward five, um, we could go back five or whatever. And then this is just an extra thing that I put in just for the, the intro, like I said earlier. But this is a, a time between when it shows your your um, your new hidden message and your original message. So it goes through that and it will uh, it'll show everything at the end. So that's all. That's that's all I got, folks. I hope you enjoyed. I, I don't know um, Again, if, if you care to leave any feedback, I would really appreciate it, but I don't know what's better. Like, if you wanted me to like, figure it out on video, or if you wanted me to just kind of go through the code and and explain what I did and, and how things work, because honestly, I feel like this was a lot better, and even just going through the code took 20 minutes, so I would feel like a video where me having to figure it out would probably be like an hour long. And that's like with cuts and stuff. So I, I think this is a better format. If you have an opinion, please leave one below. Uh, if not, you know, <laughs> I appreciate you watching this far because really it's, you know, I appreciate it. It's, it's nice of you. And uh, clearly I did something right if you enjoyed it this much. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.